Breaking news, we're learning about a county-operated drive through coronavirus testing station here in San Diego. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carla Chiquetta. And I'm Marcella Lee. Barbara Lee Edwards has the night off. We will have more on that drive through testing facility in just a moment. But first, let's get you up to date with today's developments. The number of official coronavirus cases here in San Diego County is at 105. But the deputy public health officer for the county says it could actually be 10 times that. Mexico and the U.S. are restricting travel over the busy shared border in Congress hopes to pass a mammoth $1 trillion economic rescue package by Monday. And back to our top story, a county-operated drive through coronavirus testing station opened up in the parking lot of SDCCU Stadium today. This caught us by surprise, so tonight we are learning more about it. News 8's Heather Hope is there live with this breaking news alert. Heather? And it was almost like a pop-up shot with how quickly this testing site got up and then went away, operated by the county. Mirroring other sites across the country, we see this happening in Texas, in stadiums, as well as in Florida and in Tennessee. And just earlier from this morning to this afternoon, near the trolley stop is where we saw the white tents and that testing site set up. That process is for uh, individuals that are referred from a provider. It is not for the general public to just drive through, oh, I think I have COVID-19 symptoms or I think I might need a test. That is not the process. Just this morning, lasting until the afternoon, in the SDCCU parking lot, there were white tents surrounded by yellow caution tape and people directing patients to the right line to get the test. Drivers were met by a staff member with a mask and other protective gear on. This is similar to the drive through appointment only testing for the novel coronavirus that is also available at a baseball stadium in Lake Elsinore. Our News 8 investigative producer David Gopperson received a drive through test at a Scripps clinic in Torrey Pines. Following an interview with an elderly woman requesting a test, she got one from a drive up location with Sharp. David got his results back, which came as negative, but the woman he talked to is still awaiting her results. David says the process runs like this. He called up his hospital, spoke with a nurse who screened him for the symptoms, and he was given a drive through appointment time. County health officials say this system is a time saver. It is a referral process from our uh, health care providers so these patients don't clog up our uh, emergency departments. And again, this is appointment based. This will pick back up on Monday, going from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. here in Mission Valley. I'll send it back to you. And just to reiterate, uh, County Health Officials Dr. Wilma Wooten said this is not a pop up for you to right. just drive up and you get can't a test. Just show up. And just because you want to test and have mild symptoms, you may not get a test. If you think you really need a test, they say you need to communicate with your health care provider and they'll help you determine if you qualify to get the make, coronavirus make test. Make that phone call first so right. that you know what the procedures are to safely get tested. Yeah, and if, they, if your health care provider thinks you need a test, you'll be referred to one of those locations. They're still very scarce, but they do have a process for doing it. They're not just going to give them to everyone. California Governor Gavin Newsom in the meantime issued a stay at home order for 40 million Californians in non-essential roles and services to help curb the spread of the coronavirus. Essential services will remain open and that includes gas stations, pharmacies, grocery stores, takeout and delivery restaurants and banks. Here's what's closed. Dine in restaurants, bars, gyms and convention centers. Keep in mind that list is just a small sample of what's closed and what's not. It's understandably left a lot of people confused. Shannon Handy spoke with a local lawmaker about this issue today. She joins us live now from the Target and Ocean Beach to give us a little better explanation. Shannon, it's it's comforting to know that people don't want to break this order and they want to know exactly what the rules are. Yeah, Marcella and Carlo, you guys said at that list that you just showed, it's just a sampling because we cannot list every single place in California that's open or closed. Target here in OB is one of the stores that's open because they sell essential goods like food and medicine. Meanwhile, we've heard from several people in other industries saying they don't believe they're essential, yet they're expected to work, and that's making them both angry and confused. From delivering bread to Target. You still working? Yeah, we're Tell still me, working. man. We're still working. To picking up supplies at Home Depot, several businesses remained open Friday just hours after Governor Newsom issued a stay-at-home order for the entire state. We are confident that the people of the state of California will abide by it. 
The order applies to non-essential goods and services. Places open include gas stations, pharmacies, grocery stores, banks, and laundromats. What's closed? Dining restaurants, so takeout orders are allowed. Bars and nightclubs, gyms and fitness studios, public events and gatherings, and convention centers. This is a dynamic situation, and there are certainly very specific cases that people are bringing to us for which we don't have great guidance. Assemblyman Todd Glory has fielded several calls from people confused about what makes a service essential or not. News 8 is receiving these same types of questions and concerns. One viewer asked why some Qualcomm members still had to work. Another raised a red flag about the sales team at Penske Ford in La Mesa. Meanwhile, a home daycare provider asked if she can stay open or not. I think that in most cases it's fairly black and white, but there are exceptions to the rule. You mentioned car dealerships. Uh, car maintenance is expressly stated as being an essential service. However, car sales don't seem to be in that same category. Gloria says while law enforcement doesn't have any resources to shut every place that violates the order down, he's hoping business owners will use common sense, noting the Department of Homeland Security is a good resource. They've compiled a list of essential services. On it, you'll see 16 sectors, including communications, energy, health care, and public health. The state specified child care and construction as being within those areas. Gloria advises people to call their local representative with further questions, saying while this all may seem extreme, it's necessary. This is being done to save lives. And again, big box stores like Target and Home Depot remain open because of the essential goods they sell. Now, keep in mind, California does have laws in place that will protect employees. So if you don't want to go to work, you can call the EDD and see what your rights are. Every situation is different, and that's why Gloria suggests reaching out to the EDD. Another question we've been asked, can you go out for a walk? Yes, you can. We've seen several people doing that. You just need to keep that six feet of distance for social distancing. And of course, if you don't need to leave your home, then don't. Back to you. Based on traffic, I don't think the message is really sunk in. I think I think there's more traffic today than I've seen all week, and I think because people are afraid that more services and grocery stores might close, but the food supply is safe, so please don't hoard, don't panic, and stay home. Lots of traffic today, wouldn't you say, compared to other days? Yes, and, and Dr. Infatides from the county spoke today talking about people's driving. Don't be reckless right. because if reckless you cause a driving. crash, that puts more demands on emergency mm -hmm. services, and we just don't need that right now. Take extra care. Take to not a breath. Put, yeah. Just buy what you need the food supply is safe yeah yes. be good to each other mm -hmm. be patient there are now more than 16,000 reported cases of coronavirus in the u.s that's nearly quadruple from monday and the death toll is up to 216 and counting the trump administration is trying to calm fears and keep the economy afloat during this coronavirus pandemic natalie brand reports from the white house President Trump is trying to ease the fears of the American public, downplaying the possibility of a nationwide lockdown. So, no, we're uh, working with the governors, and uh, I don't think you'll, I don't think we'll ever find that necessary. But some governors have. Illinois has now joined California and New York with orders for residents to stay at home except for essential services. We need everyone to be safe. Otherwise, no one can be safe. New York also says it's still in dire need of critical medical equipment such as masks and ventilators. The president says he's activated the Defense Production Act to increase supply. We have millions of masks which are coming and which will be distributed to the states. The states are having a hard time getting them, so we uh, we're using the act. The administration also announced it's closing the southern border to non-essential travel, the same step it's taken with the northern border. Neither of these agreements with Canada or Mexico applies to lawful trade or commerce. On Capitol Hill, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has set a midnight deadline to finalize an agreement on a trillion dollar economic stimulus plan. We expect to have an agreement by the end of today. It would include relief for small businesses, loans to major industries impacted, and cash for individuals based on income and family size. If your business is shut down, you've been laid off, you need money, not a one-time check. Goldman Sachs is predicting as many as 2 million people could file for unemployment benefits this week alone. Natalie Brand, CBS News, The White House. The stocks rallied early today but ended up way down again. The Dow closed down more than 900 points or more than 4%. Both the NASDAQ and S&P 500 closed down about 4%.
Today, county officials urged San Diegans to follow the shelter in place order issued by Governor Gavin Newsom last night. Right now, we are waiting for the county's daily update of confirmed cases. As of last night, 105 people have coronavirus here in San Diego. That's the confirmation number. No reported deaths just yet. The statewide shelter in place order went into effect at midnight and has no end date. The governor's uh, executive order is an order. Uh, it is not a suggestion. Uh, it is not an encouragement. Uh, it is a legally enforceable requirement in all 58 counties in California, which of course includes us. Public health officials warned again today that the actual number of cases is actually high, greater than that, than the number that has been confirmed as public and private labs continue to ramp up testing throughout the county. But I also think that Supervisor Fletcher made some valid points. With your own family unit, you can get out. You can be safe. Get out, get some exercise. You know, it's not it's not entirely safe for your mental health to be cooped up inside. Yeah. But as a family unit, you can go out and feel safe. The United States will soon be effectively cut off from the world as the federal government closes the northern and southern borders. All non-essential traffic is blocked from crossing into the United States at border crossings with Canada and Mexico. News 8's Monique Griego has been in San Isidro all day and has more on how the closure will impact San Diego. Monique? And those new restrictions are expected to take effect at midnight tonight. And while many people do believe they are necessary to keep people safe, right now it's unclear how it will affect commerce on both sides of the border. The actions we're taking together with our North American partners will save countless lives. New restrictions at the U.S. borders in North America, first with Canada and now with Mexico. All non-essential travel is banned for at least the next 30 days in order to hopefully help stop the spread of the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19. It's okay if we're not spreading the, the virus, but um, it will affect both sides. Omar Cantor works for Amazon in San Diego, but lives in Tijuana. You know, I'm not trying to panic because it's not that bad, but what I worry about is getting uh, the virus and then spreading it into my, like, my, my parents and my um, grandparents, which are the most vulnerable, and I'm trying to care for that. At the borders in California, the restrictions go into effect tonight at midnight. Non-essential travel means, from what we know so far, that does not include commerce or people who travel for work like Cantor. As we did with Canada, we're also working with Mexico to implement new rules at our ports of entry to suspend non-essential travel. These new rules and procedures will not impede lawful trade and commerce. We need to have a clear policy so people understand it before they get there and we need to keep our social distance as we are and so forth. In Otay Mesa and San Isidro, long lines of people were seen trying to enter the U.S. before the ban went into effect. And while the ban will be reviewed in 30 days, people along the border can help but be uneasy. There's panic uh, shopping on both sides. Uh, Costco over there is basically empty. Most of the stores are like they're ran out of toilet paper and hand sanitizer. And again, these new restrictions will be reviewed in 30 days after that. It's unclear what could happen, but for now, people just very uneasy on both sides of the border here. Back to you. All right, Monique, thank you. And now really is the time to come together to help our neighbors impacted by this ongoing crisis. If you're able to, please join News 8, the San Diego Foundation, and our partners and give to the San Diego COVID-19 Response Fund, which has raised more than $4 million already since launching earlier this week. Your donation will help provide assistance with food security, rent, utility bills, and income replacement, as well as things like gap funding and no interest of business and community loans. 100% of donations will go to organizations helping San Diegans impacted by COVID-19. The money is going to stay local. Donate now at sdfoundation.org slash COVID-19 or on the News 8 app if you are in a position to be able to afford to.